I'll just introduce myself. My name is Sophie. I work for North Bridlington Library for the East Riding. Uh, you may have seen some of our videos before. You may have seen Alex, who I work with. We've been doing these videos together and we've been talking about our homes that we grew up in um, and where we lived. And we've been going, we're working our way around the house. So can you guess which room we're in today? Hopefully you can all see that. For me, this picture is a really good representation of that room. And I think you've probably all got it, but it depends on what you would call that room. Now, it may be called a parlour, a reception room, a living room, a lounge, a front room, a back room. Did I say sitting room already? Anyway, what I will call it today is a living room because when I grew up, that's what I called it. We called it the living room. Um, for that reason, it's the room where we kind of spent most of our time. And so, how about your living room? Were you allowed in there? Was it kept for best? Was it kept for guests? Maybe you had more than one. Sometimes you had your reception room or you had your living room, which was kept for the family. Did it have a particular smell to it? A lot of people remember things like that from, from growing up in the childhoods. Did it smell of polish because of the furniture in there that was polished? Did it smell of if you had a coal fire, could you smell the fire in there? Or if you had the old bar fires, you could smell the, the, the dust on them. If it hadn't been used for a while, there was kind of that hot dust smell. Uh, could, did it smell of pipe smoke or tobacco smoke? Maybe your father smoked growing up. So did your room have a particular smell to it? What is it that you remember and what did you call that room when you were growing up? So what we'll do throughout these videos is do some pauses throughout and that will give you a chance to discuss what we're talking about. So we'll do that, we'll do that now. Okay, so hopefully now you've had a discussion about the room itself and we'll go into a little bit more detail as we go along. So what was in that room? Uh, we'll have a little look at the furniture. So most or I think most places would have had the three-piece suite. So it would have been like the, the best furniture in the house, really, that you kept in that room. Um, so there's a couple of examples here. I hope they come out well. So these have got your three-piece suite. This picture here has got a coffee table in there. So did you have a coffee table in yours? Can you see the one at the top as well? Now that one, there was a piano in it. Did yours have a piano in your room at all? Did your dad have a best chair um, in your room? Was there certain places where everybody sat? I know that my dad, uh, he had a big um, record player in there. It was the twin tables that were in, a, in, a, um, in an alcove and he always had this particular chair and nobody else sat there. And I think everybody kind of had the favorite place to sit. So did you have that on your furniture? Now I'm new to this. Alex has taught me this. I didn't know what these were called. On your furniture, did you have anti-macassars? You see these? Now they may have been crocheted or knitted. They could have been material. They could have been embroidered. But did you have those on the backs of your chairs or your three-piece suite to keep them looking nice? They could have been on the back of the chair or on the arm of the chair just to keep it clean to stop hands rubbing on there. And also, I think it was when men used to wear bill, brill cream in their hair or women had the hairspray on and it just protected the backs of the chairs so you could wash those and it didn't get on the chairs. Um, but I might be wrong. So did you have your furniture? Your best three piece suite? Now uh, one thing that most living rooms had as well was a sideboard. So there's a couple of examples there. You've got one nice sturdy one there. Quite often they were passed down through the family. I think the one that we had had been passed down. I think it would have been my grandma's. And then there's a slightly more modern one there. So what were your sideboards used for? What was kept on it? What was kept in it? Um, did it have, was it kept for drinks on the inside? Maybe games were kept in there. Maybe you kept your records in there when the record players came out. Um, Mum's Best China as well. Was that kept in there so it was nice and safe and out of the way? Um, and how about on top of your sideboards? Did you have photos on there? Um, did you have, um, or were your photos kept on, on the walls? And what photos did you have in your living room? Did you have paintings in there or pictures? 
in mind we've got the uh, I've got family pictures in there so the family that live away from me I've got their photos on there so did you have the same thing um, so the, the, the sideboard is quite a nice discussion another main piece of furniture that people would have in their rooms as well is the mantelpiece so going over the fire which I'll come back to because we will talk about fires um, but maybe you want to have a little look at what was kept on your mantelpiece sometimes your clocks are kept on there but, um, I'll let you discuss your furniture so your three piece suites and your sideboards and um, we'll come back and talk about fireplaces in a minute thank you okay so we're back so hopefully you've had a discussion about the furniture now quite a central piece within a room would have been a fireplace did you have a fireplace in your living room I had a coal one in mine and it was kind of the, the kids jobs to take care of it um, we had to clean it out take all the ashes out and things I really liked our coal fire um, in fact when it was cold we ignored the kind of the three-piece suite and we'd all come and sit round it and, and huddle closer um, in my house growing up we had gas no we didn't we had oil central heating which was quite expensive so we didn't use it that often so we tended to be around the fire as much as we could but how about your fireplace was it gas was it electric was it coal did you have the old um, stoves that would have been within the fireplace? Um, what else was in that fireplace? Um, if you had a coal fire, did you have to have the fire guard on? I know that ours used to get knocked over sometimes and the coal would roll onto the rug and the carpet and there was always kind of scorch marks in the carpet. Um, how did you get that fire going? Especially again with a, with a coal fire, did you use newspaper? I remember having to put it over the front of the fire um, to create that draft and... Um, Get the fire going we had to try and do it before the actual newspaper caught on fire and Alex we both discussed it we both did this growing up you'd get your newspaper and you'd twist it and put it in a knot and use those as fire starters so you took it in between the, the pieces of coal and um, the house I'm in now is a quite an old house and in the fireplaces it's got the back boilers over the top of the fireplaces and that heated the water around the house um, do you remember the, the dampers or the vents that used to help um, draw the fires? If it was really windy outside as well, that would make a difference. Um, was it, whose job was it to deal with it all? Now, because I had a coal fire growing up, the kids had to go and get the coal from outside. So we had the coal scuttle um, and the coal bunker uh, outside. So I'll just show you a couple of those. These are just a couple of examples as well with the fireplaces. But I'll come back to those. There's the gas one. Oh, it's not actually, that's your electric one there. You might remember those. Well, there's the old stove type, which are actually back in fashion now. They're very, very popular and they are quite nice. You get an awful lot of log burners now. If you had a coal fire, do you remember what went with it? So you had your coal scuttle, and sometimes you had your coal chest and always the brass equipment that went next to the fire so there there's the there's a little brush and the pan so to clean out your ashes each morning and there's the coal tongs there so i remember um, getting the coal scuttle and going outside to the bunker which i didn't like because it was always cold and there were spiders in there and cleaning out the fire how about the surrounds what was your fire surround like um, so you probably would have had a mantelpiece, but then around there was it wood or brick, tile, you might have had marble. A lot of people had slate, the actual hearth area of it. And then what was around your fireplace? So did you have your mantelpiece on there? Um, there's one here. You see that one? So that's got the mirror. That was a fairly popular one. Quite a few people had mirrors over the fireplaces. So, an awful lot of people had a clock on their mantelpiece as well. So what I will do is let you discuss your fireplaces, because it was such a central part of the room. Um, so if you want to talk about what type of fireplace you had, what the surround was like, and if you want to have a discussion about that, then we'll come back in a minute. Thank you. Okay, so hopefully you've had a discussion about your fireplace. And now we're going to have a little look at what might have gone on top of the fireplace or it could have been in another area of the room which would have been a clock or could have been a clock uh, now there's different types you've got your carriage clocks and um, i'll just show you some examples here well you've got your mantle clock 
Can we see those? Now quite often the carriage clocks, they might have seen like a brass carriage clock. They were sometimes given for a length of service in a workplace. They were quite often given um, from work for certain achievements. You've got mantel clocks there as well. Can we see the different types? Sometimes they had numbers, sometimes they had Roman numerals on. But lots of different types. Whose job is it to wind the clocks up? It's quite often a job that some people remember is having to wind the clocks up in the house. Did you have a grandfather clock? Or the slightly smaller grandmother clock? I have one in my house at the, mo at the moment, but it is quite noisy, so I have to admit that sometimes I do turn the chime off. But quite often these were inherited down from the family. If you had a clock in your family, where was yours from? Could it have been a wedding present? Sometimes the mantel clocks were wedding presents, or was it passed down from the family? How about the sound it made? I'm going to play you quite a familiar chime and hopefully this might jog a couple of memories. I'll move forward so you can hear the ticking because it's a lovely noise. I always find the ticking of the clock very comforting. chimes there did you work out what time it was now that one's known as the Westminster chime which was uh, quite a common chime back then but was beautiful um, maybe you had that one did it chime on the quarter hour or the half hour or just on the actual hour the other thing that you might have had as well although again sometimes it was in different rooms of the house was a telephone um, Alex and I discussed this we kept ours in a dining room because we didn't have a hallway in our house it was a very very old house um, and Alex kept hers in her living room. So I'll just quickly show you a couple of examples and then we'll have a discussion. So really, up until about the 1940s, you had the candlestick phone, which is on under the picture just there. And then it went to the, the dial phone. Now that, that's one of the ones where it spun all the way around, so when you had to wait for the number to go back around again. Now this is the... the type of phone that I had growing up um, until the, the button ones came out. Um, or did you have a phone? Maybe you didn't have a phone, maybe you needed to go to your neighbour's house to make the phone calls or quite often, like I did because I had to pay for my phone calls, let's go and use the telephone box in the village. So what did you have and was it kept in your living room? So what we'll do is just pause this in a minute so that you can have a discussion about the type of clocks that you had in your house what were the chimes like and where were they kept? And then if you want to have a quick uh, conversation about the phones in your house, if you had one, you can do that too. Thank you. Okay, so hopefully you've had your discussion about um, the clocks that may have been kept in your living room. Now we're going to move on to entertainment. So what was your living room used for? What did you have in there? Now, hopefully it was a really nice, friendly family room that you had and that's why you kept it. So did you have a radio? something like this. Now this is an old radio rentals catalogue that we have because a lot of people did just rent the, the radios and the TVs and their record players. So did you have an old radio? Do you remember getting it? Do you remember what was the first thing that you listened to on your radio? Or did you have one at all? Not everybody had a radio. So there's a couple of different examples in here. Um, I will just show you as well. So a couple of examples of your radios in there, and families, 
I like this one here. We've got the parents and the child and that they're sat listening to the radio. I think that one will have been from around the 1940s. So it was when a lot of the war announcements came on, which is when radios, I believe, became fairly popular. And then also, how about the Radio Times? This one has Oliver Twist on the front. Did you have a look through the Radio Times and plan when you were going to listen to the radio and plan your programmes? Uh, like how people do with the TV Times now, uh, when they're watching things around Christmas. So there's some really good ones in here that you might remember. You've got Paddy Whack, Jimmy Young, You've got workers' playtime, lunch date. A very popular one was listen with mother. Uh, you've also got woman's hour. So do any of you remember these programmes that were played? You've got Mrs. Dale's diary, music while you work. So there's all sorts of different things in here. Um, also, there's lots of holidays advertising here as well. So it's the same for your TV. Did you have a TV? Not everybody did. Um, I didn't have one when I was younger. I do remember getting one. I remember having to unplug it when there was a thunderstorm. Um, but did you have a, a, a TV again? Was it bought? Was it gifted? Was it rented? So there's all sorts of different types of televisions. Do you remember getting your first television? And if so, do you remember what the first thing you watched on your television was? Another thing you may have had in there as well would be to listen to music. So did you have a record player? There's an old trick set there. But you may have had a gramophone or a different type. So did you have the old vinyls, the old records? Um, who remembers his master's voice? Do you remember the old videos? You can see what's, you can see all the reflection now so you can see the type of room I'm in right now. So that's his master's voice. Did you remember listening to music? in your living room or did you play music did you have instruments in there one of the photos i showed earlier had the piano in there so did you get around uh, together did somebody play the piano maybe mum or dad sat and played the piano whilst you all sat around and listened or sang uh, maybe you learned to play the piano was there other in instruments in there um i have a little i have i have my ukulele so I quite like playing the ukulele, um, but my children aren't so interested in sitting around and singing to it. That tends to be something that I do by myself. Um, so we'll have another discussion shortly. So what we've gone through is entertainment. Did you have a radio or a TV? What was the first thing you watched on them or listened to? Um, did you have music in your room? Did you have an instrument in your room? So we'll pause it again now and let you have a discussion. Thank you. Okay, hello. So hopefully you've discussed entertainment and now we're going to have a look at another form of entertainment. Maybe you use the room for games or hobbies or both. Um, maybe there was knitting done in your living room, maybe some reading, um, maybe crochet was learnt in there. Quite often there was a sewing machine. I'm going to show you this one, it's very heavy though so bear with me. This, hopefully you can see it. Super heavy. Do you remember the old Singer sewing machines? I think most houses had these. Now maybe your mum used it for repairs. It's got a really heavy handle to turn on the side. Were you allowed to touch it? Quite often children weren't allowed to use the sewing machines, not until they were a bit older. But what was what did your mum use hers for? Did she make you clothes the best? Sometimes if there was a birthday coming up or uh, Whitsuntide or something like that, then a nice dress was made um, or a new outfit for the boys as well. So maybe mum used the sewing machine. Um, do you remember her sitting and having it set up in her living room and making clothes? Maybe crosswords were done in there. Did your dad sit and smoke a pipe or a cigarette? Does that smell trigger memories for you? So maybe father sat there and did some crosswords, or maybe he read to you, maybe um, he read the newspapers. We've got some old newspapers here as well. So we've got the Daily Telegraph here. This one is about America's first time on the moon. 
Well, how about the Sunday Times? So we have an old copy of the Sunday Times here. So do you recall sitting in the front room? Maybe you sat yourself and read newspapers in there. Maybe you read books or magazines. Um, there's an old magazine called The Post here. And in fact, there's a really nice picture in here. Let's have a look. You know, it was when, I think that's Queen Elizabeth and her sister, when they were younger. So we've got the corgi at the feet, and they're playing a piano. And can you see their paintings on the wall as well? So maybe you sat and read magazines or books in your living room. Maybe, and I'm pretty certain that I did growing up, although sometimes we did it at the dining table, which was play games. So I've got a couple of examples of games you may have played here, which I'll show you. Who remembers Mahjong? I still play that now. This is an old set here. It still has the instructions. And it even, it even has a smell actually for me that really reminds me of growing up. How about if you have a look at the picture on the front of here? We've got dominoes. And there's some chess and checkers and cards. Maybe you played some card games. Drafts in there. Do you remember any of those games? Did you play those? This was an absolute favourite of mine growing up. And I've taught my children how to play it. Which is Othello. Does anybody remember playing Othello? I love this game. Does anybody have spin tops? My children love playing this now. We still play this now. So you spin the spinning tops and try and get them into the, into the targets and then you add up how many points you've scored. And that's the same for flying hats. There's another game. Again, we still play this one now. How about Scrabble? Again, I still play this one with my children now. So a game of Scrabble. Okay, so we'll pause it again in a minute. Um, so what we've just talked about is games and hobbies. So did you play any games in there? Was there any hobbies? Maybe play music in there or read or knitted in your living room? Was there particular things that you did there? So we'll pause it now and let you have another discussion. Thank you. Okay. So hopefully you had a discussion about the, the hobbies and games that you played in your living room. So I'm just going to talk about the very last thing now, um, because quite often if you played games, you may have played them on the floor. Now, what did you have on your floor? When it was a living room, did you have carpet in there? Quite often people had carpets or very nice rugs in there because that was kind of the best room in the house. Um, so what did you have on your floor? And if you had a carpet, how was it cleaned? If you had a rug, how was it cleaned? This is, if you had a rug that were normally quite large, unless you had one in front of the fireplace, like we had kind of like an old scrap of carpet in front of the fireplace to protect the main carpet and the rug. So when that got too burnt, then we'd replace it. If you had a rug, how did you clean the rug? There's a couple of rug beaters here. So are they familiar? Do you remember hanging the rug up outside? And um, giving the, car, the rug a good beating to get all the dust out. And then I'm sure many of you will remember getting a hoover or a vacuum cleaner. So there's a lovely one here and this one has a price. So it was just over six pounds. And this one has lots of attachments on it. Now, maybe you can tell me what these were called. I know about the upright hoovers or vacuum cleaners. Was this called a cylinder vacuum? So maybe you know what this one is called. Um, if you do have anything, maybe I've made mistakes along the way or you called things something differently, you can always get in touch with us and let us know. We are at, on Facebook and we're at uh, East Riding Libraries, Museums and Archives. So maybe you or your family member or carer can get in touch. And this one, if you sent off on the back, you get a free hairdryer. But whoever this was didn't get their free hairdryer. So there's a couple of the old hoovers there with the attachments, which then may have led to the upright ones. So what did you
do you have on the floor of your sitting room? So for now, I've let you discuss that, but I'm going to say goodbye because we've talked about the living room. You can discuss the things that we've already mentioned and talked about if there's anything else that you want to talk about. But what did you have on the floor? What do you remember? So I'm going to say goodbye to you for now and we'll see you soon in another room. Thank you.